Awesome. Onslaught. Happy Battle Cats. That's the way it goes. Curse these hands right behind them, trying to tie it up at 3 1. You would assume that Vampire Lord, having not won any games thus far, are going to go down here. But hey, did we expect to see some subs? Did we expect to see that happen? I honestly don't think so. We do have some maps coming up soon, but Gore, talking about this, I guess, next set, Curse These Hands, Vampire Hunt. Uh, what are you expecting as far as like the ability for them to actually maybe become some top teams here? I mean, Vampire Lord is in this weird area where they feel, I feel like they have a lot of potential, mm. but it hasn't been fully realized, whereas Curse These Hands has been realized, at least to a certain extent right now. The only time that they've been able to lose that I think is a, a deserved loss is up against Onslaught. This one is probably going to be a little bit more in their favor. Yeah. They have a lot of strengths. They actually blew me out of the water the first week they played because I did not expect them to be as strong as they were. And so this is the chance to kind of keep that glory going forward. Onslaught's really the team to beat, but Curse These Hands is right behind them. Well, Curse These Hands trying to definitely make a story for themselves here in the Paladins console league one that has a positive twist at the end of maybe hey we're the first seeded team obviously onslaught showing moments of weakness if they don't have either the full roster or they aren't firing on all cylinders because we know they can find victories even when you know tay was in that was a really you know yeah. dominating jaguar falls performance but they couldn't continuously keep that going it's now up to Vampire Lord picking the Frog Isle, banning out the Bright Marsh, the map that we just saw. Now to try to set up the draft for their success. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Gore, what do you would go for here? Do you think this is a sniper play, or is this something where you try and leave a lot of threats on the board, say, let's at least get something comfortable uh, so we feel like we can carry if we play well? Well, Makoa should be first should be. overall. Actually, Drogos. Yeah, well, I presidents. get that too. I get that too. And. This is such an interesting pickup, though, because I feel like Drogos is very big on this map. He's actually incredibly strong on this map, but he fell in priority because snipers become, became so prevalent. Leon became so prevalent. And I want to see Kersey's hands potentially go into that kind of realm. And Nara Makoa is incredibly strong. You it get is. a Maldamba behind it or some other incredibly strong healers, considering we're on console. Maldamba's right. not as big. It makes a huge difference for them in terms of their survivability and presence. You know, the truth is, this is an objective-based shooter. And I think what we see in the higher levels of play is that you see the front lines prioritized almost always. Unless there is this just out, oh, yeah. of war, out of line, out of whack damage dealer. You know, maybe at the height of a street justice mave kind of a situation where you're like, whoever gets that, or a bomb king at the master slam, where he's like, get him no matter what. But I feel like, you know, Vampire Lord here are recognizing the threat. And they take the Drogos when Inara Makoa, either one of those, you know, would have been a, a nice pickup here. They're yeah. going to have to contend with the Fernando Barrick over some very sustaining situations. And I don't know if they have the tools to really deal with a Kinesa. Not really. I mean, I mean unless Fernando, Drogos is hitting maybe. some really solid shots. And, like, you know whereabouts she's going to be standing. There's a window you can aim at. As long as your rockets are always going there, you save yourself. But then you lose the presence on the Inara, the Makoa that are standing below you, more than likely looking to kill you very apropos description there yeah. more than likely looking to kill you but also you know you just, you, you just look at it and I, I think it's this bigger conversation about the objective being the key component around the draft and what these good players do what these great damage dealers do one of the reasons we find um, they become a lot of the stars is because you draft towards your front line and your sustain and your ability to do that but then then your damage dealers have to flex and they have to be willing to, to play the bomb king or play the drugs play the willow Play the Zen, play the Buck, whatever is open and still deliver performances. Hilltime obviously loves his drug so we're going to see that being uh, extremely successful. But I think he's, you know, Kev Falcons also made quite a name for himself. And Bishop is nothing to snuff at. Even though his name is Fluffy Koala, Anara's not very fluffy. He's, yeah, really not. Wow, 100 to 0 for Curse These Hands. And admittedly, I mean, they are a strong team right now. But I didn't expect that kind of leaning in their favor. But the draft is pretty solid for them. I mean, yeah. If these shots start hitting, then uh, it's going to make the biggest difference. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can already tell. This is the problem with the draft right here. Who's stopping this from happening? Nobody. You know, his, the, their only chance is Fernando. Their only chance. But he's clearly over on the left side. They see him. They're calling him out. So Bishop's like, great. I mean, Bishop could go stand on the point if he wants to right now. Yeah, look, he's going to go do it. Why wouldn't you? There's absolutely, like, even if we go back to earlier, like, 
look at how many shots he can miss versus how many he hits. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. It's the ones he hits that are going to make the big difference. If he gets a headshot, it's going to be even more of a difference. And it's just free presence. Plus, you have an Inara on the point with yes. a Ying behind it. Like yes. that is just, It's just so much. And like you said, it's all about the capture point right here, which at the end of the day is what wins you the game no matter what. Dovahkiin finally going down. 99% overtime going to be taking through. But you still have all the damage. Bomb King still around. Kinesa still untouched. And you know, the, the thing is, this is why having the Inara as the first pick option, right? Maybe you give up the Makoa something or the Makoa Drogos, and that's deadly, sure. But the Inara, if you do have a Kinesa at that point, allows you to take so much more damage, you could actually fight around a sniper shooting you all the time. You could actually outheal that early game with Erdengard and use your wall and just play around the space, and that applies pressure to the Kinesa to get up and close and personal, and that's not what she's good at doing. Overtime taken away here from Curse these hands. They're going to grab the objective, and now Richie, unfortunately, is going to have to back off or go down. Looks like back off. I mean, that's his option. That's the one he wants to take. Doesn't always get chosen for you, or you don't always get to choose. Sometimes exactly. they choose it for you. And curse these hands do something that we have talked about in the last couple of weeks, and it's something that will decide a great team from an okay team. Right. And it is, do you know when to fall back? Do you know oh, when to yeah. retreat? Because if you can retreat at the right time, which is exactly what they do, you get a re-engage that is a lot cleaner than when you have to just full reset and die. Agreed. I absolutely agree, man. Now, the thing that they've got going for them that I love, as far as the draft, put this on Jaguar Falls, you know, maybe Vampire Lord have a little bit of an edge for me. Fernando gets to the back line. He's a super, super pressured out, uh, you know, kind of brand Scorch Fernando that just serves the, the role of a front, uh, fat flanker. Vivian has plenty of room. Bear can control. Rocket boots all day. Have his turrets healing him up, fighting the dark room. Drogo's with combustible. You, you can't avoid it. But it's really just going to be bridging this gap right here, this wide open space where the sniper can see you, and you have to take so much poke that if you commit to the back line, you might be dead once you get there. It's really up for Vampire Lord to try to just, I don't know, muscle through a bad spot versus trying to tactically play around it because the tactics do not support this succeeding. Baldi is hitting some really solid shots right now on this Torvald. And it's one of those things, at first it kind of felt as though he was just enacting a turret. He was literally just kind of standing in oh, generally one era, area, but hitting all of his shots. Now being able to get aggressive, using the bowling brawl appropriately, being able to get not only his health back, but having that shield that deters Curse these hands. It's at least making sure they keep track of this zone over here, which is making it so much harder for anyone on the red squad to actually get through to the payload. I mean, this is what's great about it, right? I mean. Everyone's trying to find a pick, and now because they have to move towards Vampire Lord in their squad, they're feeling good. But uh, what happens next round if it continues to go 1-1? How do they kind of get rid of that advantage? Really liking the zone, though. So doing the best with what they've got. Sometimes those are the drafts you play. You play to 3-3, and then you just try to make a move, surprise somebody, master writings, whatever it is and win that last point fight. We've seen it on Ice Mines, seen it on Temper Mill. Beautiful hook there from Dova Kane. And he gets stunned off as well. No chance of a Rocket Boots. And now, Frog Isle is such a close map, Gore. I mean, this is a push that surprisingly still has some potential. And the big thing about this aggression is it opens up Kinesa to actually become viable again. There's yes. like that short area where she just doesn't really have an impact because she either can't see or she doesn't have a safe place to stand. Oh. Right here, curse these hands. They can get aggressive. They can put Kinesa in a great spot, and they can start blowing the heads off of Vampire Lords. Uh-oh, and Baldi had to go into a really awkward position there, but luckily they've had a lot of pressure here. Makoa looks like he will fall, and I think that... That might signify, let's back off, ladies and gentlemen, and guess, in, in, in case we can just keep the Sonara going nice and healthy. And look at this, turning the tide. The Ying still there, the clones healing up Kev Falcon in life exchange, what I would assume is being played, healing up the Inara. The Shatter proving so valuable, and Fluffy Koala and anything but Fluffy right now. They, they still almost push that through, starting at overtime with more than halfway to go. A lot of strengths. A lot of weaknesses at the same time, and it's all kind of built on this Kinesa, how far you can get in that initial push. Right where the payload is, right there, oh, Kinesa has to be out in the open. Hill baby. time, that is just a silver platter yeah. in terms of a kill. When you're looking at the point, when you're looking even just a little bit further ahead with some aggression from Curse These Hands, Bishop becomes a lot more deadly, and he is just difficult to handle unless Hill time or Richie, someone commits their all into only hitting 
Bishop. Hill time's job is to make sure Bishop doesn't have any uptime. That's what we need. And those shots like that are risky. That's why it's not a great matchup, but it can be very successful. If Drogos hits his stuff, Bishop's going to die. We all know how much damage Drogos does. And the displacement also helps. So he's got to help bridge this gap. You can fight around the tree. And so far, seems what they're doing. Shell spin keeps Makoa on the battlefield. Look, they are taking the risk. Now, this is where things get a little dicey. Everyone knows what you're trying to do. Inara potentially still on the objective. And there's the seismic crash as well. Looking to maybe just focus some backline targets. There's the Ancient Rage. Kev Falcon hits the combustible. And oh, Richie is getting low. So Hill Time has to back off. But Dovahkiin low himself. And Akatsuki is actually going to find the turtle. Bishop does find a kill onto Jordan. That might make a big difference in terms of getting rid of the healer. I mean, that's 50% right now for Vampire Lord. A lot of control and no front lines so far from Curse. These hands respawned enough to actually cause them any trouble. Till now, I think Inara touching down. But they've gotten so much. 60%. You can play around that. You oh, can play nice. with that number. And you know what? He knows where it's going. Kev Falcon finds a kill. But here's the Drogos right back at him. Hill time with one. But I think Hill time might just fall right here. Dovahkiin finds the kill under the dragon. And 39% and counting for Kirsty's hands back on the objective in control. And with an ultimate, yes, the Illusory Rift for Yang still available. And that's a lot of healing. It is. For Dovahkiin specifically. He's standing on the side, not in line yeah, of sight, yeah, doesn't have an uh, illusion with him. So if he takes some damage, I expect that to get popped. But as of right now, he's in control. He's forcing this Fernando around. There is going to be the ult coming through. 144 down to 72. But still, a lot of healing per second just to keep him in the fight. Yeah, oh man, just a ton of opportunity here for Christie's hands. But Kev Falcon, he's going to go down. I mean, this is really now up to Bishop, and they forced him into an awkward spot where he has to touch the objective. For me, Vampire Lord have used their lineup strengths to the utmost degree, and they have captured this objective. I couldn't be more impressed with the adjustment made from round one to round two to be able to be successful against this lineup. As long as they can keep this kind of effort up, I want to say. It's very difficult to maintain because you have to focus incredibly hard, especially as Drogo's right now, right? He has probably the most difficult job which is simultaneously dodging Kinesa, shooting at Kinesa, but also trying to kill anyone else that might happen to get in his way yeah. as he goes for that goal. And Hill Time is not making, I mean, it's not easy, but he's making it look pretty simple so far. That round went very clean for him. Yeah. There was a mishap, I want to say, with his ult, maybe aiming for Makoa, hits the Bomb King. Either way, he's been able to have the time of his life and set up a lot for his team. And what's great about him is that he's been able to be successful while opening doors up for his damage dealer, Vivian. And I think that's also been a big reason why Kev Falcon has felt some more pressure. Vivian is a little untethered. The Drogos is playing towards the right off in this weird space. And he is he is available to take down the Inara, who just doesn't feel as comfortable. Fluffy Koala definitely felt a little hesitant to attack the objective. And maybe that's a playstyle adjustment from him. But I think it's more of just a really, really good threat from Vampire Lord. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. One push, and it's already 3-1 to one after looking dismal in round one. A lot can change in a just one change. round. It's how do you adapt? And that's always been the story for a lot of these teams. Do you know when to fall back? Do you know when to aggress? Do you know what caused you trouble last round? Can you adapt to make sure that that doesn't cause you issues this round? Curse these hands are going to have to figure out how to deal more with Richie, more with Hill Time. And admittedly, Akatsuki and Baldi as well, just because of how much pressure they were applying and how much distraction they were. But damage, it's in favor of Vampire Lord. Control. In favor of Vampire Lord, so Kirsty's hands have to step up to make the difference. Akatsuki, with a little bit of a laugh there. Why not? He's been playing well. Finds himself on the right side, shepherding this Drogos, using the Terramorph skin, and he's going to jump up again. Bishop this time, though, is not surprised. But I think they have a game plan here. Fluffy Koala just attacks it, and this is what we saw. Maybe Kirsty's hands playing a little more passively than usual, and now they are the ones with 39% and counting on the objective. A Dragon Punch actually tried to go for and missed by Hill Time. So he's going to have to wait to charge that one back up. Ancient Rage popped, though, and that's going to be a lot of damage. Oh. Bishop takes him out of the air, and now Dovahkiin going down. It doesn't make much of a difference. You lose your primary oh. damage, you lose your healer, oh. and that makes it a lot cleaner from Bishop. Mama, there go these hands. Curse him. Look at that, just taking him down two headshots in a row. I think that might be it. I mean, you might you might have to wrap up here on the objective. That was Bishop showing up big, takes the dragon threat out of the skies. Might just find him yet again, the two-time.
back-to-back -back kill onto the Drogos in Kirsty's hands. Now I have two points. I like to think that every time Curse These Hands do something that's impressive, they all mutter to themselves, don't curse these hands, catch these hands. Catch and these it's hands. just some really bad catchphrase that they found in I the like middle that. of their sitcom <laughs> that is airing uh, next week. Next week. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, also known as Esports Weekly. Yeah, we all, exactly. There you go, man. You just started it and ended it all on your own terms. That's not, and that's what I'm all about. You live your life, Core. You make your jokes. But seriously, watch Esports Weekly. Seriously, next week. watch Esports Weekly, for sure. We'll talk about this game, specifically only this game. And you uh, know, for an hour. You know what it is? I'm, you know, obviously, maybe maybe a little less than an hour, Core. But um, <laughs> I do think that there's a lot to learn from the way that both teams have adjusted. And it's actually some really good Paladins. And this is not the type of Paladins where I say, give me a break. Somebody just push this thing in because they're not taking risks. Hilltime is taking risks. Kirsty's hands are taking risks. And they're both assessing what went wrong and then making stark adjustments. That time, they send an R straight to the point. They go straight in with a King Bomb from Kev Falcon. They create the space. They turtle them into the objective and around that right side towards the edge of the water. And I think this this is a great symbol of how the best type of, I think, sports and, and com com competition is when two people are throwing punches, not when two people are holding their gloves in front of their face. Yeah. And so far, as long as Bishop is the one striking, I think that it's going to be hitting a lot more. Doesn't matter if Vampire Lord have a relatively solid defense. That sniper can eat through it in no time. If played appropriately, so far he's been able to hit some choice shots, but at the same time, he's also been shut down. Uh, and that was almost big, but Hill Time, Akatsuki, both going down right there is opening up a lot of space. 30 seconds left. Kirstie's hands were able to almost push it in with just overtime. And now getting some great healing here from the Yings, from some of the clones. Still taking some damage, but able to move on. And that was a big kill, actually. Jordan, he falls. Big Genos main there. Moving on to the Furia, having himself a heck of a game. But you know who else is if we take a look at the healing charge? This Ying, he's been keeping up, man. 194,000 healing. The push goes through. It's all 3-3. Three to three. But, man, our, our, I mean, I think it's clear. Life Exchange does the dang job. Life Exchange standing up there. They burn Immortal. They have good healing numbers, good ults on the side of Kirstie's hands to enable this that was round. Huge. Admittedly, I'm looking at the way things went last time. I don't see much of a reason for Kirstie's hands to change it. Kev Falcon, it was a little awkward because the bomb or the king bomb goes into the back. Yeah. And then he gets a lot of space, gets a lot of damage, doesn't find any kills that right. really changed the game for him. But it was really the space that matters. And I think that's kind of the same approach you should take here. How yeah. much can I buy with just my ult? We have Headhunter. We almost have Ancient Rage. If we can get those online, those will clear so much room for Anara that Fluffy Koala doesn't have anything to be worried about. Yeah, I, I agree, Core. I mean, I think you got to look at this in the bigger picture of what does the Knessa love to do? Loves to sit here without pressure on her and apply pressure to the other players. Now, if you use a King Bomb, if you use ults, that's going to back that team up naturally, and your Knessa Bishop is going to be able to succeed a little bit more. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Hill Time. He does not get caught. I think that was a Ying clone, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he wasn't able to finish the Dragon Punch off. Dova Keen going into the Ancient Rage, although the fight looked to be tilting in his favor with Kev Falcon tossing these uh, bombs from these hands. And Jordan, he's going to fall. Oh, man, this looks great for Kirstie's hands here now on the objective. Nice hook, nice kill on the Baldi to make sure that that's not going to be able to stay. But Drogo's back. He'll be able to man. get a kill right there. And that does make a big difference. Dova King's now the oh. just main primary oh. focus does end up going down, but not without a fight. Richie went around the world. If you watch a replay of what Richie did, he went around the whole map. That that point fight. He was in their back line where Bishop is now. Rotated all the way around, back up the stairs. And if they win this game, I got to say, Richie's journey to the far east and back to the west, it brought back the W because this is a Vivian now that has no contention on the objective. All the ancient range, all the big ultimates have been used. They've got a killer. The Sentinels are just plowing through the health as best they can, but unfortunately, you're also locked in this position. You're uh -oh. standing and dancing around a pillar. You're locked in a corner. Richie, Richie is one hit away from dead, but no one's getting aggressive. Curse these hands. They don't even need to worry about but it. But Jordan's Jordan has died. Richie's still firing away 99%, and Curse these hands are just going to take that one. What, a, what an interesting kind of matchup. Curse these hands coming back after leading 
and then eventually taking the W. Great plays from Richie at the end, though, to keep things interesting. And they try to min-max that situation. It was a tough thing. Ultimately, it was like we have to send Vivian on a world tour to try <laughs> to get to Bishop. And, you know, those are hard things to make work. But he almost did it. So congrats to him. And it all comes back to somewhat in the draft, somewhat in the play style. A lot of it, though, was draft-wise. You go for Drogo's first, and everyone on the side of Kersley's hands goes, OK, yeah. we know what we're going to draft from here on out. You left a Nara Makoa open for us. We don't really care if you happen to take Furia because even though that would be like the perfect trifecta of a combo for us, we have the lineup that we really want. I mean, you know that anything could win. I mean, Paladins, we've all we've all had that, that lineup where like, oh yeah, this is gonna this is gonna own in ranked, and all of a sudden, you know, Androxus you see gets a double kill, triple kill, quadra kill. You're like, what the? What just happened? I'm a Nara. Where you know I got a Furia. <laughs> Everybody else dead. What's going on? And you realize that oh oh it's you know. It's 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 Cus Cutie on the Androxus. He's just he's he's queuing right. with Dosips and uh, he's just getting They're pocketed. Just yeah, yeah. So and you're like, well, clearly any type of Uber performance can change the yeah. the, the range of uh, the success of a game, but it's just a matter of they had a lot less to do to be successful. Khan and Nara Makua all available. Console swings away from where we typically see where front lines are kind of running heavy on PC through the Global Series and the PPL. Yeah. And part of the reason is probably what you're going to see out of Vampire Lord. Honestly, that's a solid lineup. Fernando, Makoa, Khan, and Nara is a solid lineup. I don't think you can really go wrong with either of those front lines. I'll tell you what. I, I really think the reason we see more, maybe more like Dro uh, Drogo's Willow bands, right? Is because Drogo's and Willows are very easy to be dominant yes. on in console. You know, when you talk about the front line repertoire and you talk about that, they can do well, but then you start looking at the damage pool and you realize that man, there are these really top tier kind of damage champions and then it falls off to some where you're like, well, they can't, they're hard on console. Like yeah. that, that is a very difficult champion to use and PC doesn't really have that change where it's like, it's really just like, what's the best for this moment? And so I think that is something, you know, the Vivians, uh, Leon's really only played in, in like the European kind of Prosper Logic, you know, camp. She has not been played very often, but Vampire Lore can go to her Try and turn the set around. I like the idea. I like the anti heal she applies. It's one of those things if you can't get dead zone, death and taxes is probably like, well, actually is the next best thing that you can actually pick up. Talus is the one I'm on the fence about. But honestly, I've seen him be successful. I've seen him in the past be completely off the mark. Yeah. So it does kind of depend, I think, player performance. I mean, I'm having flashbacks to the Kogon Stone Keep where it just didn't look good. This is actually a draft I'd be pretty scared to play in ranked because I would look in like, okay, how good's my Yang, right? How good is my Leon? You know, I know Makoa's a good champion, but like, is the guy playing Makoa going to do everything yeah. that a good Makoa can do? And especially Fernando, is he just going to hold his shield up on the point and just be like, you know, Vivian and Bomb King just throwing the shield at him? Like, he's not going to be in a Nar Khan unless he's a good. All of these things, you're kind of like, uh, I hope you perform. So far, I, I am very confident that Vampire Lord will at least give us a round of interesting gameplay. And so let's see if they can turn this set around completely. What do you all think? Can they get the win? Is their draft good enough? Is a little bit too performance required uh, to be able to usurp the top dogs here? Gorb, what is your personal opinion? I think on paper, both of these are very, relatively solid. But like you said, Vampire Lord, it kind of feels like their execution threshold yeah. is a little higher. Not yeah. by much, but they put a lot on the line with the Talus, right? I think Leon, you can kind of hit or miss. She's either going to be really strong or not. But Talus, I mean, he either hits hard yeah. or he is spending most of his time dead. Like, there is really, I think, no in-between here. So Richie is going to have to step up for me. Whereas, I mean, Kev Falcon, we just saw what he was able to do. Bishop, he's taking phenomenal aim from a Knessa to phenomenal aim on a Vivian. Yeah. It's not going to be that big of a change. And you've got Khan and Ara. Right. I don't need to go into that. That's just that speaks for itself. Kananara is really nothing wrong with that, unless you're on the opposite team. Then the then you might be a little begun. worried. Battle has begun, says our third commentator there. I wonder what he gets paid. He's always working. His rate's very high. He actually. is. Yeah, I mean, even if he has a low rate, like he is the hardest working man in show business in esports. I'll tell you that. Never misses a call time. Hill time, speaking of time. Finding Kev Falcon. Curse these hands, getting the vote. And it does appear that so far they have the objective control. They have backed off a little bit, though. Trying to hold this high ground. But it's Vampire Lord who finally find a few kills and force them all the way. Solid control, 48% to 27. 
Vampire Lord going to be able to catch up relatively quickly. And again, if you can deal with the Inara, if you can deal with Fluffy Koala, either make him timid, make him fall back, kill him off, whatever you have to do. As long as it opens up and creates your team space, you're going to be feeling it a lot better. And admittedly, Kev Falcon not able to find a way in. Right now, Fluffy Koala not able to find a way in. That 93% yeah. is looking pretty solid. I mean, Baldi doing such a fantastic job as the Fernando. I mean, that's what you want to see, right? You're, you wonder, how can, can, is this team going to perform? But all of a sudden, you see the way he's holding three, four members back by himself, and you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping for, basically. You are doing exactly what I wanted. Nice bombs as well. The sun is going to come through. Must be running Accelerant. And it is unfortunately going to allow, I guess, Dovakin to get back on the objective. But will it be enough if you're in the eyes of Kev Falcon to turn this tide of the fight? It seems like Richie and Baldi back in their winning ways. Going to at least be forcing Kev Falcon into the dirt. Good shots from the side. Fluffy Koala locked between, well, his own wall and Atalus. And that punch going to miss. But Richie doesn't really matter. The rest of the team's there all surrounding it. 99 to 99. But Vampire Lord, the they take control. And they Escort just the shut payload. down the Inara. And that's probably the hardest thing to do. But at the same time, the only thing you truly have to do to break apart a composition that is relying on her. You're right, man. I, I think uh, I think this is, this, is, this is Vampire Lord showing that they came to play today. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see if they can continue this. Obviously, with a little bit of time left in this set. Last game went about 15 minutes or so on a very, very short map with a very quick push. So we'll see if this one goes a little bit longer. Games on still keep can go the distance, about 20 minutes and above, if none of them get pushed. Such an awkward area to try and fight Bomb King in. It's going to be very close quarters. And because of that, you can see he's getting a lot of damage. Oh. Falcon finds a kill on the hill time right there. But that payload's still moving. No one's really judging that one. They're trying to fight extraneously on the sides yeah. instead of looking towards the main cause right now. Baldi causing them a lot of trouble. And, you know, I, I, I always get, you know, kind of entertained by the uh, slight changes. The, the capital I versus the capital, the lowercase L, you know, I feel like sometimes, sometimes, names are purposefully written to be slightly confusing. Or kind of like, you're in the know or you're not in the know. Like, either, either know I'm going to say my name or you're going to question it every single time you say it until I, in person, tell you how to pronounce my name. And they can only do that. And that's not a good strategy. I mean, it relies on getting the land in order to tell us it really does that we're rely calling on you land. the wrong name. Like, he's like, dude, my name's Beatty. How do you not know? That's like a... That's an L that's meant to be pronounced like an I. Or an I meant to be pronounced like an I. <laughs> you never know. know. Yeah. It's both at the same time. Exactly. And whichever one you happen to say is always the wrong version. Always the wrong version. But, you know, I think that... Uh, I think that very much so. If you're looking at something like this, my advice as a potential esports player is to grow your brand. You want your brand to be something that's easily recognizable, and you want it to be something that is easily spreadable. So if people don't even know how to say, you know, your name at first glance, or they have questions, it is good to clarify those things. Not because your name isn't cool and it's not super clever, but because in the wide world of people who just see you for the first time and decide whether they care or not, and then move along. It is always good to give them more reasons to care than to not care. Two words. Ball and Barry. I mean, think a about name, it. A name, easy to remember. Think about it. It yeah. didn't take a lot to no, really make it stand out. And it is something that we have, like, we have remembered for months. I'll never forget Ball and Barry. And it's, I think I said that earlier. I can't remember. I, and that's the issue. It was just a couple hours ago. It was a phenomenal Bomb King. And I cannot remember your name. <laughs> But I remember Ball and Barry <laughs> last week, back yeah. in the 10 million damage. Three, it's like you're used to, the thing too is like you're used to in English, right? Especially if you have an English speaking. Yes. A lot of our console players, I mean, from Europe or, you know, operate under, under English. We have a couple of players in the PGS and CIS who actually have different names. So we have to translate them for them. Because Russia doesn't do the same thing. As the illusory rift comes through, and I'll finish my point a little later. As Talos takes 1,600 damage but doesn't quite die. And we'll use his inner strength, rune of travel. Back there's the enlightenment. It's going to find a kill. 
on a GC to MT. He'll time with a double now. And that's Bishop trying to answer back, and he will in spades. Kev Falcon, though, backing off, but he can't escape the anchor. The deadly, deadly turtle. Ancient raging from the sea, and they will at least secure, for now, the objective with 33%. Still plenty of time for Curse These Hands, but it is such an awkward retake on this map. They're not playing better. They're not clean. I mean, especially compared to last map. It just doesn't feel clean coming out of them. And they are able to get a kill right that there on Baldi, but it feels like it was kind of an isolated lockdown. Fluffy Koala needs a lot more healing than this in order to stay alive, in order to have that difference. But you can't isolate Makoa. You can get a couple kills. You just have to push him back. That 81% is a number you're fighting against right now. And you know, they went down, right? But what's the problem is they went down in a really awkward spot because they gave up keep and they gave up everything. Uh, there's really nowhere they're fighting from. That That is a big issue. <laughs> <laughs> Whose shield's bigger? <laughs> it was a little bit of an issue here. Curse these hands. They, they do the right version of losing a fight, backing off, and then retaking it. Vampire Lord give up the fight, but they go back to no man's land, and there's really no way once you give up the keep and the and the and the basically the third tier to a bomb king and a Vivian and a Khan that you're gonna get it back with an Anar on the objective and time running out. I think I'll go back and say a team knowing when to retreat is and, is and a how smart, to retreat. Yeah. But it's also where to retreat to, yeah. how you retreat, yep. I guess, like you said, is the best way to do it is not just we can fall back. You can run to your base if you want, but yeah. that's not going to win you the point. It's <laughs> just where exactly are you giving them the advantage? And like you said, Curse These Hands had no issue taking the high ground. They right. take a hallway. They come over here. They have an organ to play on if they really want to. They got so much room, so much leniency to play with. That now, I mean, one fight, that can push this payload through this arch, and that is one of the more difficult things to do. All you have to do is take out a Talus, take out a Leon, maybe a Mako on top of oh, that. It makes it so easy. You're right. And there it is, the Inflame Anara just running out, but doing a lot of damage and forcing Hill Time back. And they have seeded again so much room. So much. Now, I, I don't know if they're going to be able to make it out. They have to use ultimates here. There's no way, unless an Immortal or an Enlightenment, do I see them sieging away from this. You could wait till he goes towards the left side. He might just try to do so. He's going to overpower. I don't mind it. Nice throw. Dunks him into the air, but there's still plenty of time. Killing spree. And I think they are going to maybe just... Oh! Think that, I think he thought those immunity frames lasted a little longer than they actually did. I, I really think that's that, what happened. That he is the just... most unfortunate. Like, you go for the body block on an ability that can pierce. <laughs> and he thinks that... No, but, you know, and like a second earlier, he yeah. would have been able to survive that. Nothing happens. If he throws his shield up, he would have been able to survive that. Yeah. Nothing happens. It's just... But he just... Wrong yeah. ability, slightly mistimed. That would and, be a, uh, a good moment in a like short story about Khan and Leon, where she like actually fights him, and he's like, you won't fight me. Like I've taught you your whole life. I'm the Primus of House Ico. You're the Scion. You love that me. is when she learned how to use her own. Yeah. And she then reaches enlightenment. She's like, wait, I realize in the grand scheme yeah. of things, you are just a... Seven. But a soul. You're just a man this wearing world. armor. <laughs> that was her enlightened Two. take. Yeah. That was her hot enlightened take right there. So You're just a man that, in armor. Like that Be hot me. quote from the third Lord of the Rings of, yeah. I am no man. Oh. Break it down for me. Overtime here. Inara still pushing. Fluffy Koala doesn't look like he's going to make it any farther. Nice blitz upper. Pushing GC back. And it will at least be another round between these two. So, so here's what must have happened, and here's why. So she breaks the shield, and it is just off the mark. So at least Dovahkiin does his best. His heart's in the right place. His heart's in the right place. He had no shield to pull back up. So, okay, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad about it. I just think Hill Time's happy about it. And that's happy probably about the, it. the best place to be in. Happy Battle Cats about it? Not the top damage, but 10, 4, and 6. And admittedly, when the person you're rivaling, rivaling is 8, 7, and 7, it makes you feel a lot better. Yeah. Going, especially with Kev Falcon. like His items are kind of all over the place. It feels like he wants focus on the Wrecker, which is going to be good. You only really need Wrecker 2. Yeah. You have the Haven 2 to help deal with Hill Time. Then a Rejuvenate and a Morale Boost. That one is where it starts to get a little bit more awkward for me. I would not be surprised if we see an Enlightenment very soon. And oh, he just misses it, bets it all. And again, no money back on the table for him. He's going to 
go home with some questions and no answers for the spouse, saying, where did all our savings go? Akatsuki, though, absolutely the man of the hour. Vampire Lord, as a result of that, dominate this objective fight. Kirsty's hands get full deicided, and now they're getting zoned. Control is what matters, and right now you're seeing it come through. All you need is a Talus, a submachine gun, and the ability to spray and dismount anybody who happens to come through. Just a little bit of damage makes a big difference right there. Fluffy Koala, though, does get rid of this Makoa. Fight on keep. Why did they take the low? I'm just so curious why they always take low, and they let Kirsty Sands come back and get high ground with, two, with, with a blaster and one of the highest DPS champions in the game in Vivian. Finally, some contesting here, but I think Baldi approaches this one in a very, very precarious situation, though it's really Dovahkiin who's just, man, hitting all his shots, isn't he? Get in your face, boost your damage, and then headshot them about 10 times in a row. You're going to feel real good about that. Real good. They're not. And I think that's kind of the big key. He's been able to burn the Fernando shield as well, so he's making sure that that consumption comes off cooldown to make sure it's a little bit easier for his team to not only deal with that front line, but also then Command be able to track. focus this Makoa. Yeah, and he's trying to find Hill Time here, who did get taken down by him. And that's going to be enough. And you've got the Vivian up top. I mean, I don't know how you hold this with her just doing that to everyone below her, which is why you want the high ground. Unfortunate decisions there. Kersey's hands may come away with this matchup, not necessarily because of mechanically outperforming Vampire Lord at the start, but simply having a better strategy towards the later end of these point fights. Whether or not you're better in a fight, strategy can make it all. I mean, you could be, I mean, look at Onslaught, right? You could be Onslaught in their prime, right? And still lose a fight because you decide to approach it a different way. This yep. didn't necessarily happen today. They ended up playing with a sub, but still, things like that will change the outcome can change who can go to a LAN, who can play in the console wars. Oh, yeah. This is money right here. And you're going to be, be looking at all of it, yeah. It's going to be game over right here. I, 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 yeah. All right. Well, Vivian terrorizing the entirety of Vampire Lord. You know, I could spot a good one when it, when it starts to show up. I just saw no way out. And it is a uh, full kind of white there. Vampire Lord so close, Gore. I mean, really putting up a good fight in this set, but Snag. it does feel like Throw. the dunk is just the beginning of bad stuff. This time he gets it right, Dova King. <laughs> I'm glad he get in on that high note here. Richie doing his best, but the Skadrin are no match for how Psycho and the Stigala. And that's just good control. And Nara, I, I said this earlier, and I, I think I'm going to be able to come through, but and Nara is... Hands down, I think, the best frontliner at being a frontliner. Yeah. Khan, he's really good at fighting on the side. Makoa, really good at fighting on the side, but Inara is all in on one thing, and that is staying alive on the objective. That's all she needs to do. And when you have someone like Khan on the side to alleviate pressure from stopping her, it makes it so much easier. Well, that was uh, pretty incredible there. I mean, I am uh, excited to continue this, but I, I do need to use the restroom, so we're, we have to take a break, and I don't know if this is production saying... Wow, thanks, Evan, for letting us know that. But I am it's 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 gotta happen and, and we're gonna we're gonna have to make sure that we, we do take one. Now Although, you're in here too with us. Now you're in here. All right. I'm just bringing you into our world. Sometimes you have these long days and it's just that's the way it has to go. Gore, are you are you off next set? I think so. Are you doing And one I get more to thing? come back in. I'm I'm the last one. Okay. With ball and berry, none okay. other. Then Ball and Barry at the tail end. Okay. Best way to end the day. All right. Well, we got some great stuff coming for Get a, you know, Go to the restroom, grab some chips, finish off. Hey, it's getting to dinner time soon, so grab some more food. We'll be back with some more Palance Console League right after this.